Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK and I talk about various subtopics and more recently I've been responding to emails I've been receiving about certain topics. Um, I'm following on from an email from a video I did earlier where a child, um, where a woman was crying because her children had been taken away and I read a letter from um, somebody who sent me an email and it explained what had happened to her. She said she'd had a personal experience. So I'd written back to her and said, you know, which part of the world you are you from? Because I couldn't believe that something like that was happening in the UK. Well, I received a response from her today and she is in the UK. And she confirmed that things like that is happening. Apparently, um, children in care is a big business. It's an industry. Um, they can make up to five billion a year from it. Well, three to five billion a year. Um, foster carers, they get 500 pounds a week per child. I remember about five or six years ago, it could be a little bit longer, but I, it was a time when I was made redundant and I thought about um, doing foster caring. Um, but by the time they got in touch with me, I had a job. And they refused me because I was working full time. And they said, you know, it's better that the person should be on um, getting benefits because at least they can pick up the child from school. So I was refused because I was working full time. And plus, there was only one of me at the time. So there was only a, I was a single person. So they reckoned that it wasn't um, it wouldn't be a good role model. Forget that. Forget that, you know, um, you know, as a house owner, had a good job, well educated. None of that seemed to matter. The fact that I was um, on my own and um, I was working was enough for them to reject my application. Anyway, putting that aside, um, I wasn't doing it for the money back then. I was really doing it because I thought, well, I have this big enough place. I could accommodate a young a young mother with her child and it would be a win-win situation. Anyway, it didn't happen. Um, but the thing is with um, this foster caring thing, I think what I get concerned about is how it happens. How does 70,000 children end up in local authority care? I mean, some estimate it at 100,000. I don't know if that includes adoptions or whatever. But 100,000 or whether it's 70,000 or 80,000, the numbers keep fluctuating. That's a hell of a lot of children to be in care. And apparently, um, I well, I kind of try to look at both sides of the story. And I can understand with regard to social workers, um, with baby P hanging over their heads, where social workers went in and out of that house on several occasions and they didn't identify that that child was being abused. I think it had about 70 injuries before that child died. I understand that that was something that, you know, is going to hang over their head for a very long time. And maybe that is what's making them exaggerate or misdiagnose or overcompensate for um, going into homes. And then also I was wondering whether or not, you know, it's a cultural thing, because when you think about families from the West Indies, especially there's a lot of black children in care, when you think about families in the West Indies, they were quite they used to discipline their children quite severely. I mean, it was taken for granted that you was disciplined severely. But in this country, discipline isn't permitted. You can't hit your child. Now, if you've got a child who knows that that's against the law, you can't hit the child. And the father or the, or the mother says, listen, I'm going to lick you. Or, 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 you know, I'm going to beat you because you've done this and that. And they beat the child and then the child reports them. Now that's going to be considered as abuse. That could be one of, that could be many situations why children are taken away. I'm not sure whether on reflection with the child, 
that if that child had an opportunity to speak out and say, look, you know, I was exaggerating. I don't want to leave my parents. I know my parents love me. I love my parents. Please don't separate me. Or does the, that um, situation go to the court and that child doesn't get another look in, doesn't get a say, that child, that child's voice is no longer heard, is no longer relevant, made the initial um, accusation and that's it. And so those children are just placed into foster care. I was just wondering if that could be another situation why so many children, especially children of colour, are in care. Um, I know that, that, you know, so we have the fact that you have social workers overcompensating and you'll have rebellious children also. And plus they're talking about, I mean, I was reading, um, what's his name? Christopher Booker. He's a journalist for The Telegraph. And he's been following up on um, this Pete Children in Care, um, looks after children and saying he's the one that said it's such a big industry, three billion um, is being paid out to accommodate all these children. And um, and I was just thinking to myself, you know, is it is it is it an industry then? Because from what I'm reading, from what his article says, that seems to be the case. It seems to be a money making thing. You know, you you know, ch you know, the foster parents getting five hundred money going in for children in care. It, it, seem, it seems to be just um, compounded by a lot of different situations. But if, you know, when you think about the 1989 Children Act, they're supposed to be putting the, the welfare of the child at the forefront. The voice of the child is to be considered. But how how do they put the welfare of the child at the forefront if the child doesn't have a voice? If in a fit of defiance, they've reported their parents. I mean, I know, I, 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 I mean, I've heard so many kids say that. Listen, if you're going to hit me, I'm going to tell the police, I'm going to call the police. They don't really mean it. But if that child doesn't get a moment of reflection and has a child, has an opportunity to correct him or herself, what is there, to, you know, how is the welfare of the child taken into consideration in that kind of situation? So children are being taken away, put in care, put in, being put up for adoption. I mean, as Christopher Booker is it also said that, you know, you've got ch children from loving families who are, you know, who are not damaged in any way because they're more you know, they're more fit for adoption. So they're being taken away and put into care and put, being put up for adoption. I'm not quite sure how they're getting away with it. One father, I didn't read the whole thing, but one father, they took his child and put it up in a foster care. And he, that case ended up costing nearly a million pounds before it was thrown out and the, and the father got his child back. I mean, it really seems to be a drive to put children in care. And I, you know, is it, would people do that just for the money? Or is it a genuine uh, misdiagnosis or overcompensation or, you know, exaggerating the facts, lack of cultural awareness, lack of empathy, lack of sympathy? I don't know. Oh dear, so um, yeah, I just wanted to run that by you. I don't think there's anything more I need to say. Yeah.